Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to sum up positive uh, versus negative values. Let's say for example, maybe this is a checkbook ledger. Just to make things simple, I'm just going to have a date column and an amount column. So in our amount column, you can see that there are some values that are positive and some values that are negative. So you would have your debits and your credits. A couple ways that we can just sum up you know, these values, if we, if we just wanted to separate out the sum of positive values versus the sum of negative values, there are a couple ways we can do this. And I'll show you a couple examples. And one example is uh, using the subtotal command. So basically, we have our um, we have our table here. And what I'm going to do is use a subtotal command. I'm going to go ahead equal subtotal. I'm going to go ahead and select that, double click the subtotal. And I'm going to have it sum. So I'm going to go ahead and click on value 9 here, uh, the function number, comma, and then the reference, which is my range here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this range, uh, press, uh, go ahead and close the parentheses, press enter. And you now notice it's 45. That's because it's, it's adding all this up together. And that gives us uh, 45. Now, I have a filter on here. So I'll, uh, this filter was already turned on. Turn on that filter. What you can do is go under the home tab and go to filter and you can just click on the filter it turns it on it turns it off so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the filter back on and what I can do here in this case is if I just want the sum of the positive values I'll go ahead and select the filter drop down here and under number filters I'll go just go ahead and say greater uh, than zero so anything that's greater than zero is going to be positive go ahead and click OK and now you notice that the sum total here is 211. Let me go ahead and turn that into a dollar amount currency so it matches here. So if I select these range of values here, you'll notice that down here it, is, it says 211. Now, if I want to get the sum of the negative values, I'll just go ahead and click that drop down, go under number filters, and go to less than. So I'll have this one less then zero and click OK and now you notice it's changed to negative 166 so if I select this range here you notice that it comes out to negative 166 uh, 166 dollars so that's one way we can do it another way we can do it let me go into the second tab here is turn this into a table now you might notice this this doesn't look very different from the other table here uh, we have our drop downs let me go ahead and clear that filter we have our drop downs here the drop down arrows and it doesn't look really look, look too familiar well basically we just turned on filtering for this range of data what I can do is turn it into a table and I can use the keyboard shortcut control T or just go under insert and uh, select table you notice if I hover over it it tells me what it does it turns it into the table and it shows you the control T uh, keyboard shortcut and I'm just gonna go ahead and just press the command here icon here and what it does is it's gonna ask you uh, yes do you want to create a table yes my table has headers the first row are fields so those are header fields so I'll go ahead and click OK now it's taken the default um, uh, formatting for the table and now you notice if I click anywhere inside the table my table tools contextual menu menu shows if I click outside of it you notice that that tab disappears let me go and click in in it and here we can actually ask for a total row and then we can do our filtering to figure out positive sums versus negative sums so what I'm going to do here I'll, I'll go ahead and since I have the table selected we have our contextual menu here under the design tab I'm going to go under the table styles option group and I'm just going to go ahead and click total row. And basically what this does is this total, totals up everything here. So I didn't really have to create a subtotal command because uh, part of the table feature is it gives you this total row and it adds, it sums up the values here. So I can go ahead and go under here and go under number filters and say greater than and greater than zero. It's going to give me that 166 value. Oops, uh, the, the greater than zero is, is 211. And then for the negative, if I go uh, for any values that are less than zero, let me go ahead and select less than zero. Basically, those are going to be my negative values. Click OK. Now we have uh, minus $166. So that's the other way that we can sum up positive versus negative values in a table is we can use the table feature. Now, if you didn't want to do any filtering of any kind, you just wanted to go ahead and have a calculation that already did it for you. What we can do now is we can just go and use a formula. So let me go in to this next tab here and I'm going to show you two examples of formulas that you can use. Now we have our same table here. I'm going to go ahead and take off the filtering here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the uh, table feature here. So I'm going to go under the design tab 
and just convert this back to a range. Once I convert this back to a range, it'll keep the formatting, but uh, the table capabilities, the drop downs, and having that particular contextual menu disappears. It's going to ask me if I want to interpret, if I want to convert the table to a normal range. I'll select yes, and now if I click anywhere inside here, you'll notice that that table tools contextual menu disappears. Now it's just a normal range of data. So. There's two examples I'm going to use, one using the sum ifs and the other one using the uh, sum function. So with sum ifs, what we can do here is we can type, e type equal sum if, let me go ahead and tab to open that by parentheses, and I'm going to select this cell range. So now it's going to ask for three arguments, uh, two which are required and one optional. So the range and the criteria are required. Uh, the sum range is optional. So it's going to assume that you want to sum uh, the range you asked for here if you leave that out. So I'm going to go ahead and select this range and press uh, comma and the criteria is I want to have uh, this is positive so I'm going to have it uh, greater than zero right so I have to put that into quotes greater than zero and then close parentheses I press enter and now you notice that it has given me the sum 211 like I had before now what I can do is take that I'm going to go ahead and control C to copy that press escape to get out of edit mode and go in here and press control V to paste that and instead of having it greater than zero, I'm going to have that less than zero. So the sum ifs of all the negatives that are less than zero. Press enter, it's going to give me the negative uh, minus 166. I forgot to put these into currency, so I'm going to go ahead and select currency here. So this is the values that I wanted before. So now if I went ahead and um, added something extra here, uh, this will add up automatically. So uh, what first I need to do is I need to change this range. Right now it's only looking at B2 to B11. So if I selected it where it just said the whole column B, whoops, let me go ahead and type B here, press uh, enter and do the same thing for here, uh, B. Let me go ahead and um, remove the 11 here. So basically it's looking at the whole column where it's going to sum it up. So if I type in something else, enter a new record here, 3, 1, 2016, and let's say I put in $100, right? So this is positive, so this is going to change to 311. Press enter, and now you notice that that has become 311. Now if I change that, let me, instead of make it uh, plus $100 away, make it negative $100. And if I did that, that's going to change to negative 266. So now that's changed there. So now this, this particular way is a little bit more uh, lenient in terms of like if you enter new data, you don't have to do some filtering to figure out the sum of the positive and negative. Now another way that we can do this is just using the sum function. So now here in this uh, second example using the sum function, this is going to be using an array. So I'm going to use equals sum and open parentheses and I'm going to go ahead and select this range here, right, whoops. Let me go ahead and get back in here. Sum, I forgot to do the open parentheses here. And I'm going to go ahead and select this range. So you notice that it's selected from B2 to B12. And this is positive, so I'm going to say greater than zero. Right, and close parentheses. And what I'm going to say is multiply this by uh, this range again. Right, and then close parentheses. Oh, I forgot to uh, enter a parentheses here. So let me put the parentheses here, and basically it's closing off uh, the end parentheses there. And so what this does is if I go ahead and select B2 to B12 here and press the F9 key, which will go ahead and execute that range, you'll notice that it brings back the values within that range. And what it's doing is it's looking to see if that array that array is greater than zero. Let me go ahead and press escape to not execute that. Whoops. Let me go ahead and uh, do this again. Let me go ahead and sum, select that range and greater than uh, zero, close parentheses, times that range again, right? And then close parentheses. So let me go ahead and uh, press select this particular uh, area of the formula, press F9 again, and now you notice that it's given you the uh, true falses. So basically, is it greater than zero? That's true. Uh, is 47 greater than zero. That's false. You notice that it's gone down the line here. So what happens here is when you take these true and falses, they're, they're basically binary. They're either uh, zeros or ones, uh, zeros for false, ones for true. It's going to multiply itself. It's going to multiply this true, which is a one, and the zero, which is a false. 
uh, against the range of data here. Let me press Control Z to undo that uh, F9 function. And what happens is if we, when you do the trues and falses, they basically are zeros and ones, and they're going to multiply against this range here. So if I select that and press F9, it's going to multiply against that. So the first one was true because uh, 40 is a positive number, so true equals 1. So 1 times 40 is going to give a 40, right? The second number was a false uh, because uh, that is less than 0. So that 47 is a false, which is a 0. So 0 times negative 47, of course, is a 0. So then it's going to go down the line of doing the multiplications uh, between 1 and 0 of these numbers. And let me go ahead and press Control Z to undo this. And then it's going to sum it all up. So if I press Control Shift Enter, which is the keyboard combination to execute this array function, it's going to give me the value of 211 here. Let me go ahead and and just select these two cells and make it currency, right? And all what I need to do is I can just take I can just take this Control C to copy, escape, so I can get out out of edit mode, and go under here and then Control V to paste. Instead of having it greater than zero, have it less than zero. And I'll go ahead and press Control Shift Enter to execute this array function. And now you notice it's going to be the same here. It's going to be that cell. Now, one of the tricky things about having this array function is you really can't do the um, the column here. So if I selected uh, just this column here and press Control Shift Enter, uh, it's really going to come back with nothing because uh, it doesn't really work well with a uh, column range. It, it look, works better with your identified range of values there. So that's one of the uh, the limitations of of using an array function. Uh, uh, just selecting the column. You have to actually select the range of data here. Uh, let me go ahead and just go back here and just select this range of data and then do Control Shift Enter. Oops, let me see what happened here. Uh, B2 to B13. Nope, it's B2 to B12. Control Shift Enter and it will give me my value there. So uh, that's one of the limitations of, of using an array. So if we had a range that we knew about, or if we were okay with just uh, changing the range later on, if we added some data here, the array function works well. Uh, if we want to have some flexibility in terms of uh, adding data later on and not worrying about uh, modifying our formula, maybe the sum if function works well too. So there's our three examples of summing positive uh, versus negative numbers in a column. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. <laughs>